Hey everyone, we're here at DerbyCon. I'm Paul Sidorian, and I'm wearing a ridiculous outfit for my talk, which is at 2 o'clock today, which would be awesome. Uh, but I'm here today with Devin Kerr. He is the, what did you say your new title is? The Director of Response at Endgame. That's awesome. That's awesome. Very exciting. Um, well, Devin, welcome. It's nice to have you. I don't think you've been on the show before, so. That's true, yeah. Um, yeah, you'll have to come on the show for a full interview. Certainly. Um, but today, I just got a couple of questions. Um, you know, like what security practices are most important given the threat landscape today where you're protecting endpoints, you've got hybrid cloud environments. Like what is the most important thing today in your mind for people to, to work on in their security practices? Well, I don't think it's accurate to say that people have zero breach tolerance, but I think that technologies which uh, foster prevention or early detection are the ones that people really want to invest in. And if you let me elaborate, mm. uh, maybe I can help contextualize it. Um, for most, for most cases where um, where you're dealing with an adversary, whether it's targeted or non-targeted, um, the cost of your breach is going to be the thing that is the the biggest incentive to acting early. So if you can prevent a thing, um, that saves you the time. But not everything can be prevented. So focusing on things that detect as early in the attack process as possible uh, allow you to basically contain it before it spreads. Uh, and then you can just take those those uh, extra funds that you would have spent on a breach or an investigation or uh, an emergency patch session, and you can devote those to personnel. Uh, improving technologies, or better yet, invest that in more preventative controls, uh, even simple things like network segmentation. Very simple, not very sexy, incredibly powerful when it comes to adversaries. And Devin, I, th I think that some of the benefit there is not direct cost as much as it is the morale of the company. And so if there's a large breach, like think about if you worked for some of those companies that had a large breach that the attackers were in there for a year or more, and there was a huge public relations fallout, and it was all hands on deck to respond to this, what I found is the indirect cost of the organization is people don't feel good about their jobs, and they want to leave and go somewhere else. And detecting early, I think, can help stem some of this problem of morale. Oh, totally. But I think there's a, diff a different issue at stake there, and it's um, companies that don't invest until it becomes a problem. Yes. So waiting until it's too late and then reacting to a thing you knew was a threat, um, yeah, that's going to kill morale. You want to come to work and you want to know that the place you work um, is letting you do meaningful things. They want, if, you want to be heard, yeah, right? And, and so it, when that happens, you feel like your voice isn't heard. Exactly. Yeah. And if you're not making meaningful change, you probably feel like your career would be maybe a little bit better somewhere else, a place that right. does fall Foster that change. So, what is are some of the important points to note when we want to decrease the time it takes to detect these attacks? Well, I, I would say it's it's visibility um, at B-Sides Charm and then at Sands Threat Hunting uh, and Incident Response Summit. Roberto Rodriguez of Specter Ops and I we gave a talk on quantifying uh, universal detections, mm -hmm. uh, rules, hunts, human processes. You really need to start that with kind of an assessment of your data. If you don't have the data, you can't even answer these questions. And most orgs are out there like, oh, I've got some partially deployed enterprise AV solution. I've got some collection of logs that's not really from everywhere. They don't know what questions they can't ask. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so their boss says, hey, uh, I read a tweet by you know Casey Smith about this or Matt Nelson about that. I, I want to know where else we're seeing this. And they have to go back and look through this sea of unstructured data to answer that question that is a really painful process mm -hmm. and it doesn't set them up to be successful. These data analysis uh, approaches are, are no cost or low cost, they're just human hours. You do them, you know the questions you can ask, you know the answers you can provide, you can start from that. But until you do that, you're just guessing. And I think that's also what's frustrating for those working in those environments where they don't have visibility into everything and your boss comes to you and says, either you've had an incident or let's say they've read something in the news and they're like, how vulnerable are we to this? And you're like, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, they have to do a, a little bit of analysis to figure out what are the artifacts of that attack, mm -hmm. where it might be in the environment. Maybe they've got really poor asset management and they don't know, oh, do we have uh, servers with, you know, JMX console even exposed to the internet? They've got to they've go through all of those explorations before they can answer the question. It just adds time. It decreases leadership confidence. Um, so again, I, you know, I think early and often is the way that we should approach this, just like we would approach say like a physical yeah. um, you know you don't know what you don't know and so ask the question get the answer and then you know begin your program I also think a great framework that Endgame and others have latched onto is a MITRE ATT&CK framework for setting up that discussion so when your boss comes and says 
how could this happen? You can say, well, I've got this framework that we've been testing against to identify those scenarios for which I believe we're most vulnerable, right? I mean, that sets Absolutely. up a lot of, I think, very engaging and useful conversations to have about securing an organization. So I, I think with attack, you have to really understand what it is and it isn't. Attack, in my opinion, is the most complete knowledge base of adversary tradecraft, and mm -hmm. it, it's cross-referenced by things that are really helpful for these purposes. One, uh, sources of evidence. So you can look and say, oh, it's got five sources of evidence listed. I only have one of those. I've got 20% visibility even before I start analyzing the quality of that yeah, data. Yeah. Doing those things is really helpful, um, but maybe you're an organization who only cares about uh, these techniques from the perspective of specific adversaries. You can cross-reference it by threat groups. It'll tell you the techniques uh, from published reports those groups use. There's, uh, there's really great knowledge there. Um, external references to blogs, um, GitHub, places where you can go to, to actually comprehend the mm -hmm. technique. Um, so, so people who are adopting that, I think, have a leg up if they're approaching it in a data-driven way. You know, here's the matrix, here's the sources of evidence I have, here's the things I can start answering questions about. Now let's see, how far back does my data go? Is it of high quality? Is it suitable for this purpose? Or is it, is it rolling really quickly? Um, from there, they can begin to answer those questions. And I think they'll be more successful. Um, one of the things, unfortunately, we're seeing is folks who look at it as if as if attack is a methodology. It's not, it's a knowledge base. Mm. Build a methodology around, around it though, it. and it yeah. becomes a lot more powerful. Awesome, thanks so much, Devin. Oh, absolutely, thanks for having me.